A PhD student extending their thesis was really common when I was doing my PhD. In the institution I did my PhD, it was just like, oh yeah, you'll do another six months to a year. Like that was just what people had. It was kind of an extension that everyone got unless you were an international student. But even then, when I approached the dean, they told me, oh, there are ways to make the PhD a little bit longer. And I was like, don't tell me that. I wanna be done and out of it in three years. And I was. But uh, extending your PhD can be a really valuable tool for making sure that you finish comfortably and in a way that makes you kind of proud of the end result. There's nothing worse than rushing to the finish line. But at the same time, Getting to the end of a PhD within your allotted three years, four years, whatever it is, without an extension requires effort from the very early stages and you just need to kind of ramp your way up to it. So yes, it is common for people to extend their PhDs. I actually always recommend against it. A lot of the time people uh, need to focus earlier on in their research and extending it for the la like another six months really doesn't do too much. If you've got to the end of a PhD and you don't have enough to write up and you don't have enough experimental data or research or readings, um, the extra six months isn't gonna sort of like push you over the edge. The extra six months is for kind of filling in the gaps just to make sure that you're comfortable with walking away from your research. Remember, Research is never completed, it is just abandoned. So the first reason why someone may extend their PhD, and it's arguably the most common, is to write up their PhD thesis. At this point, the PhD candidate or student has finished all of their research component, all of the lab work, collected all of the data, and now they're in the writing up phase. Now this has to be very carefully managed because writing up can just fill the time that you give it. So hunkering down, making sure that you completely commit to writing during those six months or the extra eight months, whatever it is you've got, is really important. A lot of people feel like they can write up and do a job, like a nearly full-time job at the same time. And in my experience, I've never really seen that work. And that's just because you need to focus on writing up. You can get it done. I wrote my thesis in about three months, like just hardcore, went to the library every single morning, afternoon. I spent about six or seven hours in the library. If I didn't want to write, I was doing figures. If I didn't want to do figures, I was tidying up references. You know, all of that sort of stuff just takes time on your, on your computer screen, fixing and writing the thesis. So uh, writing up is very common. And like I said, you just have to be careful that you don't distract yourself when you're not in the lab. Keep a steady routine, keep turning up to do the writing and you'll get there. But yes, writing up is a great reason to extend your PhD only if you're committed to the actual write up phase and you're not using it to just to kind of escape into uh, the real world. This video is brought to you by my newsletter. Go check it out at andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. I'll put a link in the description. When you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks from the tools that I use, how to write the perfect abstract and more. It's exclusive content only available on that newsletter. It's completely free, so go sign up. Another reason to extend a PhD is poor topic choice. Now, quite often this is resolved very early on, like in the first six months to a year after doing those first preliminary investigations during your PhD, and that is time for your researcher and you, and sorry, your supervisor and you to like just, just go, okay, well this isn't working, where else can we go? So poor thesis topic choice can actually just push you out six months or a year on the other end, and you'll find out relatively early on, but it does feel like a wasted time early on. It's not completely wasted. You've learned new skills, you've learned how to navigate the academic system, you've, uh, found all of the appropriate important people to talk to in your institution, but it can push out the other end. Now, I recently found out about this awesome, like non-for-profit, it's called Effective Thesis, effectivethesis.org, I'll put a link in the description. They will actually help you decide on a topic that satisfies sort of like real world issues, which I love. I love the fact that there's a consultancy group that doesn't cost anything that can help you choose a PhD topic that will have real impact. They also provide mentoring, 
They also provide sort of ongoing support for free for PhD students. And uh, I think it's a fantastic sort of uh, service that they're offering. This isn't a promoted post. I'm not mentioning it because I have to, I want to. So go check it out. And if you're deciding on your PhD thesis topic, it'll be worth you taking a look. The third reason that I've seen is I'm just going to finish up a few experiments. Now this one is a little bit kind of uh, scary when I hear it because typically it's the research supervisor that is pushing a research student to be like, oh, just finish up a little bit more. Just do a little bit more. Just spend the next six months filling those gaps. Now, my argument for not doing that is that if you've got to the end of your PhD uh, you, and you have enough to write up, right up. Filling the gaps if you have to is important, but not if you have to extend it by six months. Remember that the extension is often not paid for. You're doing free work for a university that is, is like a massive business. So I do not like people extending it just to fill in those little experiments. In fact, I uh, had a PhD student at the same time I was doing my PhD, a friend, and her supervisor said to her, well, we need to fill in this gap and we need to fill in this gap. And she went, no, we'll get rid of that whole chapter completely. And the supervisor was stunned, but she still got a PhD and it was just, you know, if you can't do a full story and you've still got enough to present in your thesis or to publish, then it's probably worth getting rid of a whole section. You know, if, if it's gonna bring your uh, thesis down in the eyes of an examiner, if you can just pretend it never happened. That's also absolutely okay, as long as you've got enough data to actually get your PhD with other stuff. So yes, filling in those little gaps, just be careful. If your supervisor says that to you, they're trying to get free labor for longer out of you, and always a little bit sus. A lot of people extend their PhD because their supervisor has not guided them through the process properly or they are an actual roadblock for the completion of the PhD. I've seen so many PhD students just get stuck at the final hurdles because their supervisor is not reviewing their thesis, not looking at chapters, not getting papers back on time, not sort of like filling in the appropriate paperwork, which is one of them, which is so strange. Like there's so much bureaucracy in a university. Supervisors have to fill out paperwork for this, that, and everything. You think they'd be good at it. Some just, you know, just, rush it and get it wrong. And I've seen that delay a PhD student actually finishing. So there are loads of reasons a supervisor can actually stop you from getting to the finish line on time that isn't due to the research or the way they've supervised you. They may be an awesome researcher, but they may just suck at admin. I've seen that a lot as well. So um, yes, your supervisor could be the main reason why you need to extend and that's absolutely okay. But you cannot just extend without a plan. You've got to extend and also think, think about speaking to your supervisor about, okay, how do we get past this issue? I've got six months, let's put in a, like a, 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 a plan for getting to the finish line on time because otherwise it's just gonna be like the last three years or four years, it won't progress. So having a plan with your supervisor, making sure they get back thesis um, sort of corrections on time, they submit all the paperwork, you know, that's very important. And uh, supervisors, you, you love them and hate them all at the same time. <laughs> Extending your PhD successfully relies on you trying to convince a university body that you will be able to finish within that time. So you have to submit a timeline. You have to submit evidence of why you feel like there was a problem in the past that has been solved and now you just need a little bit of extra time. Now, a lot of universities, if you look at their online terms and conditions, they'll say, this extension isn't guaranteed. But my experience is that it's almost certainly guaranteed. They want students to finish. I believe that in some universities I've worked at, the department gets a certain amount of money for the amount of PhD students they kick out the other end. So if you just need another six months, they're still gonna get the money when you graduate. Um, and that is sort of like why I think it's so easy to get an extension on your PhD. But remember that you still need to convince the university, it's still a big bureaucratic system with people's opinions and egos. So you just need to make it easy for them. Show them a timeline, just 
outline what the next six months looks like, how that will lead to you finishing. If it's writing up, come up with a plan of when you will submit different chapters and blah, blah, blah to your supervisor or whoever it needs to go to. Um, if it's uh, you know filling in the gaps, which you know use cautiously, um, talk about the experiments, how you know they're gonna be a success, any evidence you have for issues you have, had in the past and now how they're solved and also just a really nice letter explaining exactly why you need it and uh, what the outcome will be at the end of the six months and uh, that's how you successfully apply for a PhD extension and uh, like I said you know don't use a PhD extension just because try to finish on time. So there we have it. There are all of the things you need to know about extending your PhD. Let me know in the comments what you would add to that. And also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my own personal website and new project where I have my, my ebook, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as my Insider Forum. Give this video a thumbs up and I shall see you in the new video.